Good day, everybody. My name is Abdul Wahid Khalidi Darbishan. I'm from Tabiat Mudaris University, Iran. Uh, it is my pleasure to participate again in GEA conference, which is organized by the University of Montenegro and with the efforts of Professor Veli Boris Palevich and his colleagues. Despite the coronavirus, the participation of researchers from about 40 countries and all the continents is excellent for a virtual conference. I hope that uh, all countries will quickly overcome the problems of the coronavirus and I wish everyone to stay healthy. I'm going to talk about the way to predict the inventory of cesium-137 and lead-210 in the reference site for soil uh, erosion studies. The title of my presentation, as you can see, is the relationship between mean annual precipitation and inventories of fallout radionuclides, I mean cesium-137 and lead-210, uh, in undisturbed soils around the world. The present study uh, is a part of uh, my student's doctoral dissertation, Mrs. Fatima Sediri, and under advising of Professor Valentin Golosov from Lomonosov Moscow State University and Dr. Mohamed Reza Zareh from University of Isfahan. You can see the land degradation map of the world. Uh, the degraded and very degraded lands together covers almost all the lands out of the polar zones, except some uh, small patches. There are some tragic facts about this map. For example, 65% of the global soil resources is degraded. Uh, it's equal to 1.9 billion hectares in the world. Since 1960, 30% of arable land cover, lands have been lost and 80% of degraded land is located in developing countries. In some developing countries, land degradation hazard is much more than the others. For example, in the Middle East, the growing population pressure on soil and water resources is combined and duplicate because of the semi-arid semi climates. So it is uh, in the interaction of the land use change and the climate. Anyhow, on-farm plus off-farm costs of soil erosion is something about $400 billion per year in the world. Let's talk a little about uh, why and how to quantify soil erosion. There is a famous sentence by a management thinker, Peter Ferdinand Drucker, if you cannot measure it, you cannot manage it. It means that you cannot know whether or not you are successful unless success is defined and tracked. In soil conservation practices, it is very important to measure the soil erosion before and after the practices to know the degrees of uh, successfulness. So we need to know the quantity of soil erosion, but how? Uh, there are at least five main groups of the methods to do this. Erosion pins, erosion plots, modeling, for example, revised universal soil loss equation, I mean RUSLE, indirect methods, for example, measuring sediment deposits behind dams, and finally, using some tracers, for example, magnetic tracers, geochemical tracers, and radionuclides. After the Chernobyl accident, along the explosions caused by nuclear tests and advances in nuclear sciences, researchers have been trying to examine the potential of followed radionuclides as tracers for accurate estimation of soil erosion and redistribution. The inadequacy of the existence of radionuclides and the complexity of factors affecting the amount of these elements inside the soil are among the important limiting factors in usage of these kind of tracers in soil erosion studies. The cesium-137 and uh, lead-210 are the most widely used radionuclides in soil erosion studies. But there are some basic concepts of the use of these elements to investigate soil erosion, uh, which are listed here. You can see the first is the inventories at the study site where soil redistribution is expected are compared to that of the stable reference site. So in these kind of studies, uh, we need to have uh, to, to allocate and to, to know uh, reference site 
which is a flat place uh, without high erosion or deposition rates and without soil uh, disturbances, for example, uh, tillage and plowing, especially after the, the nuclear weapon test, I mean 1954. So it should be a flat area without high rates of erosion and deposition and without any soil disturbances, especially in last, for example, 65 or 70 years. The next concept is the landscape positions where the inventories are smaller than at the reference site are considered as eroded and those positions where they are greater are interpreted as the position sinks and the last concept is that is those with inventories similar to the reference site are either stable having a long-term balance of erosion and deposition so the problem is to find an appropriate reference site close to the study area and to measure the inventory of radionuclides not only in one point but at least in several points to calculate the mean inventory for the reference site. Uh, but the problem is, uh, another problem is uh, that uh, it is not possible to find an appropriate uh, reference site in some uh, environments. For example, here we can see the main uh, three categories of this kind of, uh, this kind of environments. One is mountainous areas uh, with sloping topography and the second is area uh, strongly affected by wind erosion, including even sand dun movements. And the final environment, uh, the final category is the heavily managed or engineered landscapes, such as urbanized, residential, industrial, mining, or densely populated mixed, air, mixed use areas, where most of lands is disturbed by various human activities. But uh, to solve this problem, some researchers uh, propose uh, the, some solutions. You can see here the main three categories of this kind of solutions. One is the estimation of the reference value using information on uh, cesium-137 or PV, uh, I mean lead 210. But the monitoring of radionuclide fallout has not been recorded in all countries, so it is very difficult to use this solution also because we don't have data uh, in uh, uh, each country. But estimation of the, uh, the, the initial fallout using the software package prepared by some uh, previous researchers, the longitude, latitude, and the annual precipitation of the study area are needed to use this kind of softwares. And finally, using the reference values from surrounding or nearby study areas with similar conditions is the un another solution to, to solve the problems uh, uh, about the reference site. In order to estimate the inventory of cesium-137 and PB or lead 210 in the reference site, we need to know the origins of these elements and uh, all the influencing factors on their concentrations inside the soil profile. Here you can see the origin and some uh, basic information about cesium-137. As I mentioned before, these two elements, cesium and lead, uh, are the most widely used radionuclides in soil erosion studies, but uh, with completely different two uh, origins. For cesium, the origin is anthropogenic, and for lead, 210, is geogenic. During the atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons between 1954 to 1963, and accidents at the nuclear activity sites, including two major ones, one in Chernobyl, 1986, and Fukushima, 2011, and also 20 to 30 other minor accidents at the nuclear fuel processing or recycling plants, cesium emitted to the atmosphere. Here you can see the, the position of uh, nuclear weapons test in the Northern Hemisphere and also the Chernobyl and even the Fukushima is in the north, northern hemisphere. So the cesium-137 emitted to the atmosphere and uh, uh, circulated by the beams and finally followed to the air surface with precipitation. You can see here in the upright, uh, let's say, yeah, uh, photo. And uh, uh, finally, uh, we have cesium-137 all around the world, but uh, it is very dependent on the, the position, on the latitude, and, and on the, the mean annual precipitation. 
cesium-137 uh, is an uh, artificial radio neophyte with half-life of uh, about 30 years. The atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons during 1950 to 1963 is uh, the main origin of this uh, element. And uh, as I said, uh, accidents of the nuclear tests also and uh, some other minor accidents at the nuclear fuel uh, reprocessing or recycling plants. Here you can see uh, some other aspects of cesium-137, for example, uh, the origin uh, uh, and uh, the distribution into northern and uh, southern hemisphere. As you can see, uh, all the weapon tests and most accidents were in the northern hemisphere, so that the spatial distribution of fallout of cesium-137 is what we can see in this slide. In northern hemispheres, especially in the middle latitude zones, the inventory of cesium-137 is about two, three times more than in the southern hemisphere and in other latitudes. Here you can see the, the, the green, uh, let's say, bars. Uh, here in the middle uh, latitudes between uh, 35 to uh, 55, uh, the, the inventory of cesium-137 is much more than the other latitudes and even in northern hemisphere is two, three times more than southern hemisphere. And uh, temporal distribution, also you can see here the maximum uh, concentration or inventory of cesium-137 were observed in 1963 or 64 here in northern hemisphere. But the story of lead 210 is quite different. Its, its half-life is relatively short, 22 years. Uh, lead 210 is uh, originated from uh, radium 226, which itself occurs in the chain, in the decay chain of uranium inside the soil. Uh, the radium 222 is the next isotope, which can be converted to lead 210 in two ways one in the soil to produce on-site lead 210 and the next in the atmosphere uh, uh, to produce excess lead 210 here you can see the two uh, two way of uh, let's say uh, originating the the lead 210 one inside the soil and another in the atmosphere the excess uh, lead 210 in the atmosphere can also come back to the soil surface and soil profile uh, by precipitation. So because of non-point source, the existence of uh, lead 210 in the atmosphere is not so much dependent on the location. And uh, here you should remember the, the anthropogenic point source of cesium-137, which is quite different with lead 210. The researchers all around the world tried to find some relationships between the mean annual precipitation and latitude with cesium-137 fallout. You can see some uh, equations, for example, for Canada, for Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Vietnam, west of Iran, some latitudes of Australia, and Morocco, and also the, for whole Iran. All the equations were uh, prepared for cesium-137, and because of the reasons I explained before, it is very difficult to find acceptable equations to estimate lead to 10 uh, in reference sites. A macro Excel also uh, uh, with this name radio calc, yeah, uh, is uh, another attempt to estimate the reference values of cesium-137 and PV, I mean lead to 10. It is developed at the University of Exeter, as you notice. Notice it, is, it can be used for estimating the reference inventories for any location worldwide based on the year. Here you can see year. Uh, you should put, uh, we'll write the year here and longitude, latitude, and annual precipitation. And finally, you have uh, the predicted inventory for reference site uh, in the last, uh, let's say, uh, point. The validity of the estimates of this method should be improved by uh, adding the new data sets for uh, various latitudes or climates separately. In present study, uh, we reviewed more than 100 points for cesium-137. You can see uh, how these uh, points distributed 
between various uh, latitudes and between five main uh, Köppen Giga climate classes here in this table. And also we reviewed 45 points for a lead to 10. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the number of the points in each uh, classes is not statistically enough to have uh, the, the equations for various latitudes. Uh, and I will explain later uh, the reasons. Uh, but in case of the, the uh, climates, here you can see that uh, uh, 35 points of 45 uh, are located in temperate, uh, let's say, climates. And uh, here you can see the location of Chernobyl nuclear power plant, number one here, and uh, the Fukushima nuclear power plant, number two, here in Japan. Uh, both of them are in the northern hemisphere. And you can see the location of the, the reviewed cesium-137 inventories uh, all around the world. And uh, you can see the, the Copenhagen climates uh, with various colors in the background of the map. And here is the map, it's the same map for lead 210. And as you can see, the number of uh, reviewed points for in the inventory of lead 210 is much less than uh, the, the, the number of inventory for cesium 137. And here is the results. The relationship between mean annual precipitation and the inventory of cesium-137 in reference site for the latitudes of 16 to 25 in the left and uh, for the latitudes of 26 to 35 in the right. So all the countries are located in these two, uh, let's say, latitude classes can use uh, these uh, equations to predict the uh, inventory of cesium-137 acceptable statistically. And uh, the same results for again for cesium-137, but uh, in two, uh, cli two climates. Uh, in the left, you can see the, the equation, uh, the relationship between inventory of, and precipitation in temperate climate and in the right for continental climates. Here is the results for uh, lead to 10. It was not possible to have an acceptable equations for the latitudes and climates separately, except the temperate climates because of the number of uh, the inventory uh, of lead uh, to 10. Uh, it was uh, 35 points, so it's as it, statistically it was acceptable, uh, let's say, points to have these uh, or to, to test this uh, relationship. But in another in other uh, latitudes and in other climates, the number of the points was not uh, sufficient. So, uh, in contrast with cesium-137, uh, lead-210 follow-up concentrations is not dependent on latitude because of its non-point origin. And this is the main reason that there was no any significant relationship between mean annual precipitation and the inventory of lead-210 in reference soil in different latitudinal zones. So uh, even with uh, enough data or uh, uh, enough points, uh, it's not possible to have uh, the statistically acceptable uh, relationships because of that the non-point source of uh, lead 210. So uh, the distribution of lead 210 inside the soil all around the world is not very, very, uh, mm -hmm, let's say, uh, different because of the non-point source of these elements, so it is not uh, dependent on uh, even on uh, the latitudes and also the relationship with uh, mean annual precipitation also is not very, uh, the, the correlation is not very high. Here you can see the some equations, some uh, final equations for cesium-137 uh, in, in, in inventories and for lead 210 inventories. Uh, we found some statistically acceptable equations uh, only for, for uh, undisturbed soil uh, and mean annual precipitation in different latitudes and climates, but uh, for cesium-137, the inventory in reference site can be estimated for only two latitudinal zones, as I said before, the lower 16 to 25 
a linear equation you can see uh, in the first row and uh, for the middle latitudes 26 to 35 uh, and of course in the northern hemisphere uh, a non-linear equation you can see here in the second row and uh, also for two temperate and continental climates uh, two non-linear equations you can see here for climate uh, temperate climate and uh, continental climates in the third and fourth uh, rows and for lead to 10 uh, only it was possible to have uh, equation statistically acceptable equation for temperate climate uh, here you can see the nonlinear equation and also uh, considering all the points together for uh, globally let's say uh, it is possible to, to use the last equation in this table to, to estimate the inventory of lead 210 in reference site but it is necessary to mention a few points here uh, a few points of uh, uncertainties or few sources of uh, uncertainties in this research. The spatial distribution of sampling points in both eastern and western coasts uh, of the continents is one of the main sources of uncertainties in the relationship between mean annual precipitation and the inventory of PB or lead to 10. For example, in Europe and North America, the measuring points were mainly located in the western coasts while for the Asia and Australia, almost all measuring points were located in the eastern coasts. So, the direction of the winds over the oceans or lands can determine the amount of trapping lead to 10 in the atmosphere. Another source of uncertainty uh, is uh, that uh, it's very important to mention that the cesium-137 inventories reported for samples collected in a given year with, uh, will be greater than those reported for samples collected from the same areas but several years later. So the time of sampling is very important. It is therefore highly recommend, recommended to, uh, to standardize all the measurements of cesium-137 inventories contained in the data sets to a standard year in order to have more reliable relationships because of the, the half-life and the decay of these isotopes. Finally, it should be noted that the cesium-137 inventories associated with the areas influenced by Chernobyl and Fukushima fallout has been included along with bomb-derived inventories. So, all the sources uh, or, or origins for cesium-137, I mean the bomb-derived and uh, Chernobyl and Fukushima and other accidents, all together, uh, which reflects uh, different sets of controls and different sets of origins for this data uh, or these points, it can be considered as another source of error in the relationship presented here. Thank you very much and uh, uh, you can contact with this email uh, in case of uh, your questions. Thank you very much.